Welcome, friends, to episode 243 of Color of Magic, your Magic Gaming Podcast, where we talk about all types of issues that affect gamers at and away from their gaming tables and computers. I am your host, Power Dragon, and fortunately recovered from his weekend of gaming. Still have my main man, Brian Sonic. How's it going, dude? Pretty good. Definitely some, some wild times out at the... None of this is my fault, I don't think. <laughs> but, but there were some <laughs> wild things that happened in DreamHack this weekend, which you won't get into. Yeah, I can't, man. I didn't do, I'd do any of it, as far as I know. <laughs> it's like I tell people, every event, you know, as they get bigger and bigger, you're just always going to have problems. I mean, you, you bring that many people into a spot, something's going to happen. I mean, I think every event I've been to, there's at least been one or two stories that come out of them. It's just endless. Though... As a sports fan, I want to take a second here. We'll give us a little bit of a second to do a quick sports ball. Condolences to the family of Larry Allen, who was probably one of the strongest linemen I have ever seen. Right. Like, I literally watched a dude block two humans. Two, two NFL-sized humans by himself. Like, unreal. Unreal. And he died at, like, 52 or something. Some, like, really young age, man. Kind of surprising. On vacation, no less. That's just, yeah. Again, all the thoughts and prayers to his family. Because, man, that's just. Yeah. I Because I forgot, man, because it's been so long since I've seen him play. And I thought he was, like, 60 somewhere. I said, nah, he's, he's 52, 53 years old. I was like, ah, that's rough. You just don't even realize. But on a different note, if you want to support us, Hit us up over at Patreon. Patreon.com slash Color of Magic. You can support your boys. You can get a shout out. Just like no one who is their actual username that's registered okay. on the thing. Like their name. So no one, if you're out there listening, thanks for supporting the show. <laughs> and so where I saw that and went, this is actually somebody's registered username on Patreon. Is yeah, actually this is no a, one. This is an Abbott and Costello routine. Oh, absolutely. To happen. Absolutely. But all right. Let's let's get into it because man, there's there's a lot of random controversy this week, and this one starts out with magic, and it turns out there was, I'm, I'm gonna be proper and say some alleged cheating at the RCQs in Southeast Asia. However, at this point, not a single person has come out denying it. With days have gone by now, and people have just kind of just reaffirm things. So. I really assume it's happening at this point. We just yeah, it's kind of uncomfortable with just nobody. Like, how dare you? Yeah, sir? you know what I mean. Like, we don't have actual like proof other than like a person saying it's a thing, and then a bunch of people coming along and kind of corroborating stories. Say, yeah. So, like, I'm gonna assume it's happening till we hear something bigger. But regardless, the concern was that a lot of people who had qualified from Southeast Asia. And I don't know the number, what percentage. It just sounds like this is a regular occurrence that goes on, if not just at game stores, definitely at these events where they're signing up last second qualifiers and, you know, eight man pods and things like that. But the, what was explained is basically a person goes up, they sign up with seven names of their friends or whatever who are either already qualified or don't plan to go, get them all signed up basically walk back up an hour or two later, report that they won in their first place, and then collect all the stuff. Whether they keep it, give it to their friends, whatever. They probably keep it because I'm assuming they just paid for all the seats. But basically buying their way into at least a, a major regional qualifier, you know? And people ha had split feelings on this because would we be okay with somebody just buying their, like, just, you could spend, let's say it costs you $15 or $20 whatever to play in an event to qualify for a regional championship. Or you could just pay, I'm just making up a number here, $400 to just skip the line and you're already qualified at the end of the season. Like, would you be okay with that? I probably would. I mean, because I look at it like it's kind of like the World Series of Poker, right? Like you could just pay your $10,000 and participate. Or they have satellite feeder events everywhere from $10 up to $1,000. Like $1,000 is just 10 people and the winner gets the seat to go play because, you know, it's where the 10000 comes from. At 10 or $20, it's like a multi-day thing, but you play up the ladder to qualify and then you got to play the World Series for $10 or for $50, whatever. So, like, I think at that point I wouldn't have a problem with it. But since that's not the system and everybody else has to qualify, 
in you know go make a day out of it you know go to a venue test a deck do all the stuff have to deal with all the random luck and rng stuff that happens it is a bummer man it is a bummer I don't know. How do you feel about it? I mean, it's obviously completely illegal to do, but if if nobody else cares or plans to go, I don't know what I don't. As you said, nobody apparently has come out and and I guess spoken and said this is not happening. It's just a bizarre situation. And, and I, if, everybody who's said anything has made it sound like this has been going on for a minute. Right. Like it's, it's not like it just happened. This has yeah, been it. Nothing sounds new about this. Yeah. At least. As far as what I could tell, I'm assuming at least a year, but it sounds like longer than that. But I, I wouldn't have a timeline to be able to tell you even when it started. So it's obviously not the way you want the system to work. But if I mean, I feel, this feel like one of those things where I go on a 10 minute rant about how wizards should fix this, knowing full well they're not going to fix this. You'd have to you'd have to pay somebody to investigate to make sure this had either somebody already in the area or you would have to fly somebody in. They they're not doing that. That, that, that is it, the pro play is not where they make their money. And as uh, Nick, uh, the person I think that uh, that that kind of did this uh, document that is uh, kind of set off this firestorm, just basically has said, you know, a lot of a lot of store owners feel like this would cost them money. They would lose qualifiers. So who you're gonna you're gonna be going into a hostile environment trying to investigate this, and you're probably not gonna find too many people very willing to help you it's obviously corrupt but as we talked about we don't even i wish i had sources in south asia to confirm or deny i do not have those i i don't know that wizards has sources in southeast asia and again they just this seems like something that's probably going to be in something that they aren't going to spend the money to correct because pro play is not where their focus is right now. i i think that's part of the problem too though is you would need people within the system to cooperate exactly to even prove it. Right. Like, and if a store owner is saying, well, I basically sold, you know, four qualifier slots that I might've otherwise only sold one of them. If we did it the proper way, well, they're getting another couple hundred dollars. Right. Like why would they not want to do that? Especially so if they know you're, everybody you're else is doing it. You're going to need somebody to confess to a, a MTG crime, if you will. To yeah, yeah. Out laws of Thunder Junction terminal. Somebody had to confess to a crime, and who's going to? Who in their right mind is going to confess to that and possibly lose their qualifier and, and maybe have, you know, have other numerous other problems come down on their head? I would say probably nobody's going to. And as pointed out a couple of times in that thread, people from that region said, well, some of the culture is that, like, you just do what everybody else is doing to keep up with them. Right. So people aren't even really trying to fight it. They're just going like, well, if they're doing it, then I guess I'll do it. You know, so now you don't even know how widespread it is. But then there's the other issue of. If I'm playing in the regional championship. Or even a pro tour, let's say, like, how much do I care that the other person bought their way past the first level to qualify there? I would say the person that did that probably isn't any good because they haven't been playing. Yeah. Every, so that was, everybody that else like, has been tested because as far as I know, that's not something that's happening in other regions. So I just feel like the people that have... A counter argument is that it could be one of those people who had just one or two bad events, fell off the tour, and instead of wanting to go through the hassle of qualifying to get back on, they might have been like, well, I can go to this thing, pay this dude 200 bucks. And I'm already qualified for at least the regional championship. So I can skip the whole first level now. You know, like, I, I, I don't I, know. <laughs> it, it, it's hard to say because, you know, you've seen pro players that would never take a shortcut. But then we've seen just as many. Well, I would take just as many, but we've seen several pro players get caught cheating. So I can't even really say for a fact that people that have skill don't do this because we have seen examples yeah. Of people who are good enough to do it without cheating, go ahead and like, hey, let's just do an extra mile. Let's just if I combine pro level skill with cheating, hey, who's to say how far? And I dude, can and that's in every game, every sport, every level. Yeah. Like, people are just looking for an edge, you know, no matter what it is. So yeah, this is a tough one. 
I, I really thought about it and was like, I don't know the best way to even go about policing it. You know, I don't I mean, know. I feel like I probably know the best ways, but it's far more money than what Wizards is oh, going sure, to sure. spend or Wizards slash Hasbro, you know, hey. The Honestly, kids could probably figure this out, but it's going to cost you a bunch of money. The thing is, without somebody physically going in that you have appointed or paid or something or whatever, yeah, to go through the process and say, like, okay, here's how I got my qualifier seat through this person or whatever, right? Without going to that level, I don't know how you would even get enough proof to hold against somebody other than, like, he said, she said. Yeah, you're going to need you know? multiple sources to be able to bring a case. And again, all of this, I, how, I mean, do, do you go to court in Asia? Do you go to court yeah. here? I don't even know. I, if, these are. And that's the other thing, too, is like, you're what, even if we say like there's a cheating, there's a crime, whatever, what is the value of that crime? Right. Like, are we saying the value is the two hundred dollars that the person spent between all the seats or whatever to buy that qualifier seat? Or is it like the potential money you could win from the regional championship or the potential money you could win from the pro tour by doing this? Right. That would be the other thing to even decide yeah. what level of crime it is or even if it is a thing. I mean, going yeah. back to my p police reporter days, there are cases where somebody would steal, let's say if they only stole four or $500 worth of merchandise, their stores and clients would just say, well, you know what? To take them to court <laughs> would cost us more than $1,000. Yep. So there's really no point in... in uh, oh, dude, I can tell you from having a retail way. store, if somebody broke into somebody's place, the first thing we would ask is, how did they break in? Because if they broke in in a way that they didn't damage anything and they only took like, four or $500 worth of product, you can't even really recover anything on insurance. Yeah. But at least if they were dumb enough, we'll say to like break a window and do these other, okay, well now you can make it like a $2,000, $3,000 expense and then your insurance yeah. will have to do something. So yeah, it's, it's a weird thing. Interesting that it got brought up. I was, I was kind of, it was an interesting thread to follow to see all the different opinions and discussions and kind of learn about culture there and what was accepted and what wasn't. But yeah, it's, it'll be an interesting story. I'm sure something will come of it, but we probably wouldn't hear about it for at least six months. I'll be know, amazed if anything happen. comes of it. Because again, we, we, we have, we, we have seen problems that are probably in the grand scheme of things, infinitely easier to fix go unanswered. So I can't see them, you know, dive That's in. possible. Going overseas to really dive into this one again, the Pro Tour isn't even really the company's focus anymore. Yeah, it depends on on where the biggest part of the problem is, too. They do have a team already in that region. They have an office there. So it would really depend what countries in that area have the biggest problem, I think. For, But again, you got to take the time to explore it. So, you know, like, we'll see. But let's hop into the soapbox and see what we got cooking. Because this one, I, I, I'm just going to rant a little bit. I think that's where this one's headed. This, this is back to being an actual soapboxy thing. But one of the things we hear a lot, right, from... I'm going to try to put this in a way that the people who are the problem will at least listen to the conversation. So I'm going to try to be very careful with my words to not chase people off, even though you know what I'm saying. There's certain people that need to hear a thing, but if you say the certain words, they're not going to listen because they think you're just against them or whatever. But here's the thing. The number of times we have seen people say, well, this game is just pandering. This game is woke. This game is whatever because you added a person of color because you turned the character from a character from from man to woman right like because we've done these different things and they keep saying well just make your own thing make your own property use your own ip use your own creative stuff right make your own original stories like all right cool but we got another example of when you do exactly that now they just want to complain about it about well why does this game not have any white people why is this game this way why is this game so woke why this game is racist this game was like you complained 
when we tried to make another thing fair and equal and integrated and whatever, and you said, well, go make your own thing. And then they go make their own thing. <laughs> and you Not have like the same that. complaints. Not that way. And okay, first off, the game we're talking about is called Tales of Kinzara. K-E-N-Z-E-R-A. Zao, which is like, I guess, the subtitle for them. Z-A-U. But this creator has gotten nothing but harassment and threats, apparently, since their game's been released. And from my understanding, looking at one, the game actually looks kind of sweet. But two, there's no shots at anybody. There's no like, we're better than this thing. It's literally just, here are the characters. Here's the story we're trying to tell. Enjoy the game. And it's like, well, what do you want these people to do? (laughs) <laughs> like literally like you say well we don't want you in our stuff you need to go make your own space yeah that's it. Then, they want them to not exist they're upset that somebody financed this basically but you know what it's just, you know it's it's how we got hbcus and people yeah. want to be mad about those right literally those exist because they didn't want black people going to regular colleges mm-hmm. right so they're like great the government actually spent money say so you know what let's make sure there's just less fighting we'll give you some money and we can start predominantly black schools all right, cool. But then now people are like, well, what about HBCUs? They're racist. And it's like, actually, they don't even know because many HBCUs have a higher percentage of white students than regular colleges have of black students. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so like, that's not even true. But they still don't argue about it. But this also comes back to like the protest stuff, right? Like you said, like, not like this, right? It's like, well, we don't need your athletes wearing T-shirts with whatever on them. All right, cool. Well, now we don't need you blocking traffic, being in the streets, whatever. All right. Well, we don't need you nailing at football games. Fine. Well, we don't need you making posts online. Uh, all right, fine. We don't need you having parades. All right, fine. Like you know what I mean? Like it's just like you don't need us to exist. Is essentially what you're saying. <laughs> Shut up and play ball. Is what you're saying. Yeah, it's like you can't say anything in a press conference, right? We don't. We don't need this celebrity sporting this thing. It's just like. Which way is good enough? Unless the celebrity is Aaron Rodgers trying to sell you ivermectin. Then well, cool. sure. But but the reality, I always tell people, okay, cool. Then tell me what you want. And they can never vocalize it. Which tells you, you just don't want it around at all. Right. Right? That That's what we're saying here. Like, this company, when got their own money, their own funding, made their own original project, put their heart and soul into it, whatever... Completely original stuff, and you're still mad about it. Yeah, it's basically kind of like an African themed story. Yeah, but but again, we saw this with the uh, the RPG that came out on Kickstarter a couple years ago, right? That was a thing, and they were getting some hate for that. And it's just like you don't want it in your stories, so let them have their stories. And if they're spending their own time, money, resources, creative energy, whatever, they're not even taking away from your stuff. Unless you just think your stuff isn't that good and you think this other thing's going to be better and take away from your thing, which at that point, you should just have them working with your thing so your thing is better, right? Like, it's like, oh, this is so frustrating. Like, I feel bad for these people, man. Like, you're doing exactly what they want and that you're still getting harassed for it. Like, I, I don't, I don't know, man. I don't know. I yeah, got review, reviews have been really good. I mean, and uh, the, the creator, somebody that has worked on, uh, I believe he's one of the voice actors in Assassin's Creed Origins, I want to say, been on several TV shows and said he has fought this problem just the whole way. Like, you shouldn't be here. You're a diversity hire. You're only here because you're black. Just all of that. And it just, it's, it just blows your mind. Oh, dude. I, and I get it. I, st- I still periodically get it that, oh, well, Wizards only uses you because they need, like, a black person to do a thing. Oh, you're only getting to do commentary because it's, like, surely it has nothing to do with my, like, previous 20-plus years of experience. No, or me mean. literally being on camera every freaking day on YouTube, <laughs> right? No. Or me being out in the public having relationships with a bunch of different people in the business. I'm sure none of that matters. Nope. Strictly because they went, well, we need a black guy and you're good enough, Right? Hell, to be honest, if you wanted a black guy just to do that, especially for like commentary and stuff, they already have Cedric. Right? <laughs> like, that's not like they thought they needed a second one. I mean, I guess is your excuse now. Like, come on, man. Like, I don't know. 
but like I said, this this is this is more of a rant to just back up these people and say like, what are we doing? Right? Even if you don't like something, you don't need to go harassing people, threatening yeah, people. Yeah, your your money. If you don't want to buy the game, don't buy the game. But don't bother anybody else who might like to buy it or bother the people that designed it. Yeah, hell, you know the number of products that come out every year in the game industry that I look at and go, eh, somebody will probably like that. Right? Not my jam, though. And I just walk away from it. I don't even think it twice about it. It's impossible to play all the games. There is just no way. That That's another good point, right? You're harassing people, whatever, over a thing that you don't even care about. Like, it's not intruding on your stuff. It's not a thing you're even considering yeah. playing. Just taking a shot because it exists. It's not like you put your copy of Call of Duty and your system all of a sudden Tales of Kids Era is out, comes up and just, oh, no. If, yeah, exactly. If you don't want to play it, go somewhere else and play whatever thing you would like to play. This uh, is it. <laughs> This game isn't bothering you or any of your stuff. They didn't take any of your money away from the games that you enjoy. And then they'll be mad that, like, you go and support these types of projects, right? Yeah. It's like, oh, you're only supporting it because it's black people. You're only doing it. It's like, well, you want them to have more original things. I'm putting money in the system so they can have more original things. What do you want me to do? <laughs> right? Like, something's got to give, man. But all right, I'm done. I'll pass it over to you. Okay, as I mentioned, I uh, went out to DreamHack Dallas over the weekend. A lot of we're really getting into a, a lot of the interesting stuff that that uh, happened there. A couple of people mentioned that they weren't able to see me because they didn't know. I'll tell you quickly. Just if you want to follow me on Twitter, that's probably the best way because I'm going to try to be going to every place where they're playing video games and or Magic this summer. So just uh, Brian Sonic on Twitter is probably gonna be the quickest way. To get updates because we ain't gotta we ain't gotta edit that. It's not a YouTube video, it's not a podcast, so that's probably gonna be the quickest way for you to figure out where I'm gonna be. So I said, please follow me over there. By the way, also if you just want to know what other content I'm doing, that's probably the best. Well, that is the best place to find out where all that stuff's going on. And uh, do want to mention uh, Smoky Bacon and Animal Ant, otherwise known as uh, Braden and Jordan Allen, went out there played in their first doubles tournament in Smash Bros. It actually got on the Big screen at DreamHack. We had no idea that was happening. I think it's just kind of a totally random thing. It's kind of surreal to see yourself, you know, on the big screen while you're playing video games. That was really cool. You can find. We know their dad is somebody and pulled some strings to get them on there. No, <laughs> I have no strings in Smash Bros. I uh, promise. I'm just you. teasing. But so somebody probably, yeah, he, he he used all that that color of magic pull that he has to get his kids. <laughs> On stream, no, none of that happened. And they actually went uh four and two, so pretty good for their uh first doubles tournament. And it, it, it as far as ours, no controversy. We'll be talking about some other tournaments later at DreamHack that had a little bit of controversial stuff happening, but we enjoyed our experience. As That's I said, we'll try to again follow me on Twitter or X or whatever it's called this week if you'd like to know where I'm going to be this summer, and I'll. Now, I got to ask, like, how busy was it? Because I, oh, I always it was assumed, wild. Yeah, because I was assuming they probably had, you know, 50,000 plus come through there. But yeah, we, we, le we left at 12 and almost didn't get there in time to play at a 2 p.m. tournament. It was, oh, it wow. was wild times. Of course, that takes into account, you know, traffic, find a place to park, getting in the building you know, and all of the all of those things and finding where you're. Where, where that, that I would say I probably if I had to complain about anything, I, I wish there was kind of some more signage or like a schedule you could pick up. You know, hey, this is where X Y Z tournament is happening because I really didn't see anything along those lines. Dude, that's one thing I will say. If you've ever been, well, you've been to Gen Con, but for people who yeah. haven't, like for the number of events that I go on, because Gen Con literally for twenty four hours for four days. Is just events everywhere in the building, all yeah. the neighboring hotels, whatever. And they give you a thick, like now there's an app, but like you can, you at one point you could pick up just a thick pamphlet and it had every event, every room throughout the weekend, whatever, like where you needed to go to purchase tickets, blah, blah, blah. Like I figured that would just be the blueprint at this point. E3 everybody. used to have that mm -hmm. too. And it's just, it, there may, it may have been on the app somewhere and I missed it, but I didn't. I didn't see anything really along those lines. 
Well, yeah, man, it's cool that y'all had some success for their first yeah. event because I know they were Definitely. probably excited about it, right? And again, if anybody else knows where, if that was somewhere and I missed it, big schedule, please let me know for next time, especially. And I'll let other people know because we probably are not the only ones running around like the proverbial chickens with our heads cut off. So now the question I have to ask is, with it being a good experience, being 4-2, is the tandem trying to be a tandem and we're going to try to just keep playing and try to win some tournaments? Or what's the plan now? Oh, yeah. I think they definitely want to do it again. So we'll... uh... That's cool. We, we how many people, how many teams were in that thing? I imagine there was a I, I believe 24. Okay, that's solid. Yep. Yeah. Well, good on especially them, for a game, Especially for a game that's been out for how old? Smash Ultimate's been out for probably a like long five, while. Years. Yeah, yeah, easily. So, man, but good Smash on them. That thing that Smash never goes away and until the next Smash comes out. And even then, you will still find people yep. playing the old Smash Bros. Yeah, I ain't never been any good at it, but it's cool that they are because... I don't know. Maybe maybe they'll win some money and save you some uh, some college fun down the road, right? <laughs> but all right, let's talk about some things that we learned this week because there was a couple of things here that are kind of interesting. So uh, we'll go ahead and let you talk about some more DreamHack stuff. Yeah, uh, as you may have heard by now, there was some controversy at one of the uh, Magic qualifiers over the weekend. Apparently. Apparently, a couple of players, I guess, uh, one one of them realized that they had pr- pretty much no way to win, I think, uh, game three there was. So they said, you know what, if this isn't, I'm, I'm going to turn this card over. If this isn't a land, I'm scooping. And and turn it over. It wasn't what they were looking for. And said, you know what, congratulations, you're going on to the next round. And apparently a judge came over and said, wait, did y'all discuss that beforehand because if so then you've committed a violation i guess you, yep. on, you may know what the actual violation was you you can't use a random thing to have a determination of the outcome and you I'm can agree guess- for the outcome to be a thing you can do it based on the game state but you can't use any random item to be deterministic of the outcome how many people would you say know that rule just, just uh, percentage of people playing Magic competitively that know that rule at all. Competitively, a lot of people, believe it or not. Oh, okay. A lot, a lot of competitive people know that. Like Neither of these people. And are... what happens, too, is a lot of judges will even make the announcement before the last round or or the, like, qualifying win and end rounds or to qualify for day two. They'll say, and reminder, we don't want to see dice rolling. We don't see whatever, whatever. And I think sometimes he might have thought just because it was a, a deck and it was a Magic card, that didn't count. You know what I and mean? we also don't know if there was an announcement. I've not heard anybody yeah, say yeah, that sure. that announcement was made. It, it may have been. And again, as you said, I don't know when. I don't know if there was a specific time when you were told to make that announcement. Nothing I've heard so far said that that announcement even happened. Oh, people may not even mention it because it's just so common it happens. I mean, honestly, to the point that some players might tune it out because it happens. Also so true. Events, you know. And this apparently, uh, the player um, mentioned his, uh, I think his... Uh, have like his Twitter pulled up or his or his Google document he goes by Stanley on on Twitter. You've probably seen it if you follow Magic Twitter at all this past week. And so yeah, had to, I think that basically stopped him from qualifying because he had uh, I think got gotten off to a one and two start, one five his last six. So but then mm. you know that fourth loss is going to make his tiebreakers not really usable. Uh, that sucks. But then, you know, and this, again, this is a thing that, you know, it, it caused a lot of controversy on Twitter, but I think we'd both be in agreement. This is a thing you can't do. He slammed his hand down on the table in frustration, and I get it, but you you can't do it. Yeah. <laughs> we can't have you slamming your hand down. So at that point, they kicked him out of the out of the Magic Hall. Not out yep. of the convention, but out of the Magic Hall, and people were some people were upset about that. But, I'm, again, you, you know what, though? Every sport, you can't throw the basketball. It's right. You know, you can't slam it on the ground when you get a foul called against you. Whatever, like that. That just applies across the board. Like yep. that's a thing. That, that that is what that is. We can't. We just we we can't allow that because you start letting people slam tables. Where does that end? And pretty yeah, soon, you can't act out. That's yeah. Just... Pretty, pretty soon, DreamHack is throwing everybody out of the tournament. Yeah, and telling them not wanting to have magic there next year. So we we can't do that. Yeah, and that that situation's a tough one because I don't think there was any ill intent there at all. No. Like these players, I don't think had ever met each other before. Yeah. This that's what it sounds not, like. It's not any kind of 
collusion or anything. They just. Yeah. And again, that's that a weird slippery slope thing, right? Like if we let this one go, when what's the next random thing we let go? And then what's the next right. random? And now is it even a thing anymore? And it's like, ah, that's tough. Like usually at that point, you can just tell the other person like, well, you know, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to win or not. And you could just look at the card yourself. Yeah. And then just make that determination. Like you don't have to tell them anything. You know, yeah, Stanley 2099 on uh, X, if you want to go read their uh, Google document where they kind of explain all the things that went down. Yeah, I think the tough thing is when, especially if you're one of the later rounds or later games going in the round, you've probably got a small crowd watching your game because yep. your match probably affects somebody's tiebreakers or whatever. So when you do it, you can't like you got mo- I wouldn't even be surprised they did it. And somebody in the audience or watching probably said something. I was like, hey, we're not supposed to be doing that. Yeah. And probably alerted the judges. I bet what happened at that point. But yeah, and he, and he said he talked to I guess two or three different judges. But the, that that rule, the rule is yeah. the rule. It exists for a reason, and nobody was everybody upheld the rule. And again, yeah. obviously, we got a rule in place where you can't slam your hand on tables or do anything that that looks aggressive. And again, that rule also exists for a reason. We get that you're frustrated, but we can't have people having angry outbursts at tournaments it just yeah that, it sucks that, and, that it went down that way it, you're right it's one of those things too where you might disagree with the rule i mean that happens in every competitive thing yeah but once you act out now you are doing something that they have to get you for right yeah. so even if there was a chance something could be changed it can't now <laughs> like, like you, you've already gone too far like it just causes a problem yeah we can't help you in good faith if we've had to throw you out of the magic hall yeah that, that reflects poorly on everybody at the point that you've had to be thrown out of the at least the, the magic part of the facility and we've seen that in a few different situations with different games and different sports like once they got to throw you out it's like well even though there could have been something done maybe or we could have discussed it or reviewed it it's like ah you already made an ass out of yourself <laughs> like it's what's done is done but i feel for him though i really do because again if you for real didn't know and it's one of those things that just i know no I malicious didn't. intent <laughs> now and i, I tough, really yeah. haven't played a tournament in probably five or six years but yeah that's the thing i did not know that you couldn't that, yeah that you couldn't d- discuss the and, conditions and like I said, by which you would it, it's tough because there's no ill intent and it sounds like they legitly didn't know right but right kind of like we say in real life too Ignorance of the law doesn't allow you to break the law. You know, right? Like, it sucks, but yeah, that's a tough one. And, and I guess the, the thing that people are asking, you know, like, for example, let's say you get caught speeding. A police officer is allowed to give you a warning. I guess our magic judge is not allowed that same. Uh, depends. Leniency. There actually are levels of infractions. And some of them, they can just, it's just a game loss. Or some of them will just even fix the game state based on the thing that happened. And then there's there's not even a warning or effectively a warning. It's noted, but like yeah. nothing happens to either player. So I guess this wasn't one of those cases. Yeah, probably not. Probably because it determined the outcome of the game. Like it directly ends the game effectively. So it probably doesn't leave room for any correction or anything at that point. Because you can't be like, well, now we get you to restart from where you were, and now you just say who's going to win. You know what I mean? Like, it's kind of, we're at the point of there's nothing else to be done, unfortunately. So I think that might be why it's the level infraction that it is. So I guess anybody that's going to play a tournament, please know that you can't, I guess, what is the, you can't do anything. You don't use any random element to determine the outcome of the game. Other than okay. playing the game. Now, you can discuss it and just say, like, hey, your tiebreakers are better than mine. You have a better chance of making day two, whatever. And I can just concede. And that's totally fine. Right? There's, we can play a game and get to a point where, like, ah, I don't think I'm going to even be able to win. I've already lost all my win conditions. Like, if we went to time, a tie screws us both. Why don't you take the win? Right? You can talk it out that way. That's fine. Right? But if you're going to use any random element, like I said, whether it's whoever draws the high card or whoever, let's roll a die. Whoever rolls higher gets the win or whatever. Like that's going to get you into trouble every time. Like that's just the way the rules have always been. Unfortunately, at least as far back as I can remember. Yeah. And I, I, I'm not going to lie to you. I don't understand the rule, but it is the rule. And here we have seen that the rule 
is going to be enforced. I believe three separate judges upheld the ruling. So, yep. yeah, don't, don't cut your cards. Don't roll a die. If you want to concede, I guess just say, yep. I concede. And, that's and all. again, I think if he had done the random, and I'm going to use in quotes here for those actually watching on YouTube, like, if you did the random part quietly, nobody would have been able to say anything. Like, you draw your card, you look at it, you decide, all right, it's a land. I'm probably not going to win anyway. You just give the person the win. The problem becomes when you start verbalizing it and then you make it obvious what you're doing. And it's like, uh, just don't say anything. If you're going to do it, you just make the decision to do it. There's no need to discuss it. No need to tell your opponent you're doing it. If you just want to be a nice guy and concede, just concede. That That's the way to do it. That said, something a little more fun and interesting here. I had a double, like a two for one. What did you learn? So the first thing was that there was a black light baseball game held last week, which is already kind of crazy. And yeah. it literally is what you think it is. Like they, they had all the lights on and then they hit a button. The music started. The lights went down and it's all dark with like the, the black light. Where players you do I want? No, yeah, it's yeah. baseball. It's still baseball. Everybody. Yeah, exactly. Players come out of the, the dugouts or whatever. All their stuff is black light reactive. The bats, the gloves, the logos on the outfits, whatever. And they played a whole game under black light. And the players is, are like, I'm here, baby. Exactly. <laughs> Swinging my bat. <laughs> which, first off, amazing because this, again, is something major league sports will never do. But minor league sports will do all kinds yeah. of crazy things. So... Awesome that that was even a thing. And apparently went over really well, sold out, like just cool event. My concern, though, was like, I'm pretty sure if I'm just looking at blacklight for like two hours of a baseball game, <laughs> that's not good for my eyes. So like, how did they get away with doing this? Apparently, there are filters you can get to make it OK to where it's not harmful. Now, most people don't get them on their blacklights because you're not staring in the blacklights very long. So there's no point in having the filters on things for the extra cost. I'm not sure I'm going to trust my local Meyer League baseball team to do that. Well, they? my understanding this is team may have, but they I'm... apparently spent a very large amount of money to make it happen. So I'm assuming okay. they got the best stuff. But yeah, it apparently works. I They're... say that, and I think I got my solar eclipse glasses at Whataburger. I don't know where they come from. <laughs> that's, that's not so, any better. So, so, it's really nice. <laughs> so I took them same glasses for the same place I bought my. A wood steak burger. I'm gonna trust Whataburger. Uh, with my optic that, that might be worse, honestly. It, it could be. <laughs> you might as well have got them in a happy meal. <laughs> but yeah, like I just thought it's that. Was crazy. But I mean, look at the other places people are giving away, like library. You know, nobody at the library check those things to make sure they work. If we're honest about it, to be you fair, feel- the library. I would at least trust the library got them from a reputable source, though. You feel <laughs> better about it, but I'm promising you, nobody at the Dallas Library probably has checked those. To though, make sure they real were. talk, even though there won't be another solar eclipse for some number of years, those that is a, total re- one. a real thing that there were people selling fake solar glasses. Oh, my God. And unfortunately, people do have vision problems from that because wow. they weren't certified, didn't have the right level lenses on them and whatever. So next time when it comes up, remember to look online, verify that like yours have the proper thing. They're all labeled if they are. So like you'll be able to see it online that they're certified and whatever. But yeah, that's the thing that happened. Remember to go to Whataburger. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) Or maybe not. I don't know. But yeah, as it turns out, Blacklight. One, there's filters for it. And two, looks pretty sweet when you play a baseball game in Blacklight. Did they also pass out like cigars and smoking jackets for you to watch the game? No, I will say... Some people in the audience, it was kind of cool because they came with like their black light reactive stuff or whatever. So it was kind of an event, which is cool. A, a, a much more interesting way to watch the game than uh, traditional baseball, which is kind of cool. But all right, let's get into a couple of quick topics here. First thing, if you didn't know, Modern Horizons 3 is out and it's an interesting set. I will say there's a lot of throwback cards. Uh, I've been part of the streamer event that was happening today. I'll probably play some more after we're done recording. But, uh, you know, is it going to get me to play Historic more? Probably not. I'm still doing a lot of standard. But, man, a lot of sweet cards in the set. A lot of stuff for upgrading a lot of decks, creating a couple of new decks. 
And I would say even for Commander, if you want to stuff, there's stuff there. The one thing I will say, though, about the streamer event is there was a hiccup, which is interesting because it's something I didn't even think about before we got into it, that when you do a regular standard release set, you kind of only have standard and you have draft, right? So everybody's either drafting or they're playing standard games. But because this was Modern Horizons 3, you could technically play historic or timeless in draft. And since not all the players play as much historic or timeless and they didn't feel comfortable doing it, like you kind of got these weird pockets of like you had to play some of the same people a lot in the queues because some of them were playing timeless, some of them were playing historic, right? So it was a little, little weird, but they found a way to work around it. Tried to, they even had some Watsy employees, I understand, filling in the queues a little bit till more people got on. And they did make the day a little bit longer so people have more time to play. So it feels like they took some learnings from the last one, <laughs> which they needed to. And this presented a different set of problems, but they actually have handled it pretty well. So it makes me, I'm across my fingers, makes me feel pretty good about the Bloomboro one when it hits. I think, I don't know if I'll say we'll be just back to normal, but we should be in a pretty good spot. So I'm, I'm hoping these last two events are a good sign of where things are to come. We know the furry set. Ain't gonna be normal. <laughs> Let's be honest. Well, the promotions and the cards might not be. Yeah. But man, I, I was thinking about this the other day too. We should see a lot of fursuit like card promo stuff when we're doing like preview cards. People are gonna show out, right? Like uh, with I all mean, the cosplayers yeah. we got. Like I, are you wait, are you people? Because you're you're doing I'm, this. Too, I'm right? probably not. I don't even know. Like the closest thing I have to any type of animal-ish outfit might be like a set of Charizard wings I could wear in the closet Okay, we're, That we're, might be about all I got. I don't think I have any Charizard else. wings. You got to start somewhere. <laughs> I think that's the closest I have. And you I think because I just randomly... Ears or something, man. Come on. Commit to the bit. I think I randomly wore them like at a Halloween thing, like right before COVID, so like 2018, 2019. That might have been it. I'd have to go dig them out. But I think that's it. I don't have anything else. Now, you, now you are in your whole draws for the MTG booty movement, but we can't get you in to put on hey, it's, some remedy. <laughs> it's easier to take stuff off than put stuff on. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm okay. saying. Okay. <laughs> next topic. <laughs> <laughs> right. <the> next topic. <laughs> no, okay. So this one's a fun one, right? We've talked a lot about GameStop. And, you know, how it wasn't worth anything, and then it spiked, and, you know, then the actual people in, out on, you know, the stock market are upset because all these stocks they bet on failing aren't failing now or whatever. Well, the person who kind of spearheaded this movement, who goes by Roaring Kitty, had a big reveal last week that they had a hundred, almost $175 million worth of stock currently of GameStop. Because of buying in low, then it grew a bunch of times and they bought other options since then or whatever. But the real reason they wanted to show their stuff is they also showed that they have a hundred and twenty thousand, so a huge number of option contracts that come due on January 21st. The reason this is important is because it gives him the right to buy GameStop stock at $20 a share. Regardless of whatever price it's selling for on that day. And as of right now, the time of this recording, it's around, I believe, $38. So almost double his money. Which is crazy. Because that means by selling this, all buying all his options, he'll make somewhere between, let's say even if he loses 15% of value or whatever, he'll probably still make somewhere between 55 and $70 million. Added to what he already has. Yeah, because I think he made eighty million once it came out, and everybody did a run on GameStop stock. Yeah, was, this is nuts. And of course, it went up since he showed his thing. Because yeah. I think at the time when he announced it, it was like thirty four dollars something. Now it's up to like thirty eight. So just dudes, I, it's not going to be a billionaire, but he might have two, three hundred million in a month or two, and he could just sell if he wanted to and be good mm -hmm. off a of GameStop stock. Like that's crazy. Here's, a, 
they're talking about kicking him off of E-Trade because I guess, you know, while it might be okay for for the Carl icons of the world to manipulate the stomach, they, they are not still not feeling us quote unquote normal folk doing things to manipulate stock market with just by going on social media and saying, Hey, I did a thing. Oh, dude, that happened last time on like Ebull and all these other things. They were, well, we're not going to allow trading of this stock or we're not going to only after hours, not going to allow trading on these things or whatever. And it's like, dude, all these other people that invest in stuff, they get on and talk about their business and the things right? coming out or just tell you things they're invested in or whatever all the time. The like, mad money guy. That's that's the Jim Cramer's whole show is, hey, sell, sell, sell. This yeah, exactly. Thing. Like, so how are we not going to allow just random dude who happen to just be smart about it? Right? And fortunately, a bunch of people have gotten educated on how yeah. stocks works because we're nerds and we're invested in the nerd things. And we found one that was cheap enough that we wanted to buy because right? Even though we hate the prices that GameStop wants to give us for our stuff, we're all still pulling for GameStop. (laughs) But man, that's crazy. Like by the end of the month, that dude is going to probably have potentially close to $300 million. Like that's wild. It is. Off off of a thing that started out being a meme stock. Exactly. Like the power of. The power of social media is unreal. Like said, taught so many people about the stock market in the ordinary circumstances. Would have never got into it. Would have never cared. Would have never tried to understand it. But this broke it down to them at a, at a level where, hey, okay, this is you know. Plus, as you said, it's a stock. We are a company that we're all invested in since our childhood. We're rooting for you, GameStop, in spite of all their all all their numerous. <laughs> Stepping on their own, stepping on their own foot as they do often. You ain't lying. All right, last thing today about DreamHack that we'll cover, but there was some controversy. So there was a game, uh, a fighter game. I believe it was a Tekken event where this happened. Yeah, Tekken Eight, I believe. The but unfortunately, win. we had a situation where we got to the finals between two guys that go by AK and JDCR. And the situation was JDCR was in the middle of a apparently an insane combo. And this is their last, I guess the last game of the set is probably going to win if he completes this combo. And unfortunately his combo got interrupted because somebody's controller tried to connect to the PS5 they were using. That wasn't one of the two players. And from everything I've read, according to the rules, if that type of situation occurs, they tried to discern, was it one of the players that caused the issue? If so, the player that caused the issue gets the loss for that game of the set. If it's an outside source, which turns out it was, then they just have to reset. You play the set over starting from the game or the point where you were you know, within that set. And unfortunately, JDCR, who looked like it or was going to win, ends up losing. So obviously he's heartbroken. Yeah. Misses, I believe, a world champ invite or something like that, in addition to some amount of prize money, of course. And then as humans, we got stupid again. Right? So AK apparently has been getting, according to him, even some death threats, but people harassing him, saying like he was in on it, he got somebody to do it, so he wouldn't lose. You know, he should have just conceded, blah, 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 all this. And apparently the guy who was in charge of organizing the event at DreamCat, he's been getting harassed and threatened. And he's like, dude, I, I have nothing to do with this. Like I, I'm making everybody ruled according to the rules that exist. Yeah. Right. So like, if there's no proof and we have to stop with this whole accusation, whatever, when there's no proof, then like things just happen. I mean, it sucks. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. But, like, things just happen. Like, here... Especially here, when you got multiple people connected controllers to the same PS5. Yeah, and here's the thing for me. Even from the few tournaments we ran at our shop and stuff back in the day, even then, I talked about our tournaments should just be wired. And, you know, because people want to bring their own controller. and go, I'm like, 
we should just play with wired controllers. Well, for to understand, those tend to not be the best ones. Yeah, sure. You know, and but I also feel like if you made that the controller to use, people would practice on wired controllers. You know, but you do, and, and according to everything I read, people have said, I guess, PS5 has the option that PS4 didn't have, that you can now go in and disconnect old connections or whatever via Bluetooth and whatnot. So that being the case, which I'm sure it will be now because we had a high profile incident, like it should have been part of the procedure to either have the players disconnect when they're done or when the new players sit down, make sure there's no old connections on the system. Right. But apparently they weren't doing that and it led to a problem. And honestly, I've been watching, I've been covering fighting games for 15, 20 years. I recall ever seeing this happen before. So. Yeah, and and the truth is, this is a thing that could have genuinely happened by accident, Yeah, right? If somebody still had a controller that was connected, it could have been in their bag, backpack, who knows what, or they're just fid- right. fidgeting with their controller in their hand. You accidentally turn the power on. You're this close enough. This just came out a couple of months ago. The <laughs> PS5 is still, I guess you could say, kind of mid midway through its life cycle. So this is probably, the, this may have been the biggest tournament that's happened yeah. to this point. It's it's just a tough situation, you know. It'll be interesting people, to see what they because Evo is coming up real soon. It'll be interesting to see what <laughs> procedures they do at Evo to make sure this doesn't happen. Again. Oh yeah, somebody will adopt some better procedures based on this for sure. Because it is one of those things, that, and you're right, right? It hasn't happened at this point, so everybody probably just got lazy about it, right? It's like, oh, it's never an issue. We don't need to worry about it. Sit down and play. But then the one time it did happen, it was literally in the worst case scenario, like dude making an epic comeback. You know, looked like he was going to lose, hits this crazy string of a combo, going to win the whole damn thing, and then we get a glitch, effectively, right? Like, uh, like if you're running the event, that's literally the worst-case scenario for it. I feel worst bad for him because it's impossible to make possibly the greatest play of your life. Oh, we're just going to reset the machines, do it again. Yep. I don't know who else could do that. You you and, have put so much energy into, you know, coming back and doing that combo. Now you're just... It's hard to imagine getting your mental state. Oh yeah. Back to- oh, they even say everybody who saw it said that he literally just went head in his hands, like immediately, because he knew it's just like I, this probably isn't going to happen again, right. you know. But we talked about this off air, but putting yourself in AK shoes is a tough situation because you dominated for a big chunk of that, yep. right? And the dude just get, I, I don't want to say he got lucky. They both made the final. So they're badass right. players, obviously. But like, he just making a string of a comeback. He was going to effectively steal a win, but that's fine. Competition. But then you're given the opportunity to play it over and win the money. And it's a lot of money. Yeah. Like, should he have just conceded? Or just it's within his right to play for the money because he he didn't have anything to do with the situation, right? Now, me personally, I probably would have offered to split the money and then play for the trophy and if there's an invite, whatever that goes with it. Mostly because no matter what, I would know the heat that's going to come down on me. You know what I mean? Like You kind of get put in an impossible situation. You win, people are going to hate you. You concede, people are going to talk crap about you, whatever. Right. So I would have probably just went, hey, this is the best middle ground I can come up with. And I mean, and I don't know. <laughs> I hadn't played Tekken 8 yet. I don't know their combo system. Maybe it's possible, you'd have only slightly, that he could have got out of that combo. Yeah, maybe. Story. That's, it, it, that's might be, it might be a million to one, but it, it may be possible. That's a good thing to bring up, too. Maybe he felt like the percentages were low, but I'm also a badass player. Maybe yeah. I break it up and I only got to hit him two more times. He'd have been dead. So. Maybe, you know, like maybe he feels entitled to that. But like maybe he also feels also also sometimes people just drop combos for whatever reason. So we can't say that he would have maybe completed the whole combo. We'll I guess never know. That's also true. He he could have fumbled or missed missed a button, you know, like not likely, but we've seen things happen even at high levels. So it's possible. So yeah, it's it's he who has never dropped a combo cast the first time. Yeah, exactly. But but it is tough because he's taking a lot of heat for something he had nothing to do with. And once that thing happened, he was already he was forced into a terrible situation. That's what makes it really bad. They're like the dude has to deal with all this 
and there's nothing he did wrong. Right. You know, that's what makes it the worst. And especially the people directing the event and stuff like they yeah. literally pointed to the rule that they followed. Like, I mean, like, what do you it's in writing? Everybody knows. Yeah. Like, what do you what do you want them to do? They didn't make the person try to connect to the PS5. Like, you know, come on, man. But they did say the director at least said he's going to go out of his way to try to pay or cover JDCR for the next couple of events so he can try to get qualified again or whatever, which at least is a nice gesture to say like, hey, we know this sucks, but we're at least going to get you to all these events. So you are a top player. The odds are you can probably do it again. But the fact that he has to is tough. What What's crazy is that yeah, I was. The, I don't know. I don't know specifically what day this happened on, but the fact that I was at DreamHack and so much of this stuff happened where I wasn't. It's just not that I signed up to cover the whole Tekken or or uh, Magic for anybody, but this just goes to show you that how an event like this there could be. There's 50 different things happening at any given time, and. You have no way, if somebody is trying to cover that, of knowing where the stories are going to happen. Oh, dude, I will tell you, like, literally every big event I've been to, there's inevitably somebody goes like, did you hear about, or were you over at this thing? It's like, where even was that? Right? <laughs> like, much less even know what happened. I like, I don't even know what part of the building it was in. So, like, yeah. This- yeah, because as I said, I, I was in the Smash Bros. area for three hours. I couldn't tell you where Tekken was. And I'm sure it was in the same part. I think all the fighting games were in the same part, but I don't know that I ever saw Tekken. I probably walked through it trying to find it. Smash Bros. by 2 p.m., but if if you would if, if you had me go back to the K. Bailey Hutchinson Center t- today and try to pinpoint what part of the room Tekken was, I, I couldn't do it. Because <laughs> there's so much happening. Well, all that being said, let's wrap things up here with the dinner table conversation. And this is one of those questions, you know, that I think old listeners, we've given some variation of this question or answer. So people may not be surprised here, but is there a black character from a story or a comic series, something in print that you would like to see in either a TV movie or even a series? Because... For me, I know who mine is, and supposedly, I'm saying supposedly because a lot of stuff with DC in this reboot hadn't gone smoothly yet, (laughs) but we're supposed to get some variation of Stormwatch or The Authority, which has Jackson King as the leader of that group. Uh, It's like a space superheroes, effectively, and was a really cool story early on from Image. Also, one of the first stories that had, like, the first gay couple in it that I could remember seeing in yeah. comic books. And that was back in 95, I think. You know, which is why when they did that recently, said, this is the first gay thing in a comic. I'm like, bro, that happened like 25 years ago. I have a comic book right. I can show you. <laughs> right. So, you know, a lot of cool stuff that was going on in that series. But he w- I think that was the first time I remember reading a comic where there was a black character that was the leader that was just treated normally. Like it wasn't just like this big militant thing, you know, it wasn't because of his urban background and we're trying to fight in the city. You know, it wasn't one of those things. It was just, he's the effectively the professor X of this group. Like he, he does have superpowers, but he's like, he's the dude in charge. He's, he's smart. You know, he's got all the leadership qualities. It's like, yeah, this is cool. So to see that character, I think in some type of TV series or movie series will actually be pretty cool if we ever get it. I, I don't know the way things are going with DC. We still may not get it. Well, I mean, if we're getting Stormwatch and he's the leader of the group, right? That's what they're saying. I'm just saying if we even get to it at this rate, because some of the recent stuff is still bombed and they don't seem too happy about it. Yeah, but I mean, James Gunn era now. So we're in that, I'm hoping. All, all that stuff's in the rear view mirror. So James Gunn, I think, has yet to make a bad movie. So until he does, I'm going Hey, to... I, people were still upset Blue Beetle didn't do as big as it was supposed to. So I don't, I don't know. Well, you had, well, you, you <laughs> had to understand, like, this is, we're, we're going to learn that this is the last movie in a unit. Well, I think it was next to the last movie. I think yeah. Aquaman was the last one, but yeah. We're, we're hitting the reset button in six weeks. You kind of had to know. Although, for to understand, they love him. He is still going to be the Blue Beetle 
in the new universe because the people that did see it. Related it. to that, I saw something awkwardly. We might be getting a new Aquaman because well, yeah, that, that supposedly they want Jason. Well, Jason Moe is already a Lobo fan, and they're thinking yeah. about doing a Lobo series. So, and I mean, he is perfect for that. So yeah, so I'm like, I get it. <laughs> like, <laughs> But yeah, dude, what, what would your pick be for something like this? I guess I didn't understand the assignment because I didn't realize it had to be print. I was thinking about redoing a TV show. That's with the fine. Actual modern qualify. Sensibility. Uh, you remember Cops? The, 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 uh, not, not the not the what Brad Boys, what you wanted, but the yeah, cartoon yeah. Cops. Fighting crime. And if, I would love to see that redone because remember. Oh, what, dude, that was a long time ago. Yeah. Oh, their my le- God. Th- their leader was black. So imagine doing that in the era of where, hey, you know. The, the relationship between police and black people has gotten a lot more complicated since the 1990s. That's a good pull, dude, because I hadn't even thought about that in, oh gosh, at least two decades. <laughs> and, and like you said, we did not have a whole lot of black people that were the leader of the show. And I oh, mean, definitely was, not. And that dude was cool, you know, because they, they all, they were like kind of like G.I. Joe, only yeah. police. So they all had code names. You know, I don't know if you ever even learned most of their real names, but yeah, the leader was a brother named Bulletproof. And, That's and awesome. he had that had that cool voice in the trench code. And he and he would always deliver the team's catchphrase. Of, it's crime fighting time. And like, yeah. <laughs> you know, then he just it made you want to be a cop, even if you had no desire to be a cop, which I'm sure it was part of. Oh, what I'm they sure. did to same way G.I. Joe wanted it made you want to be in the military whether you wanted to or not before you would watch G.I. Joe. Yeah, that's a good pull, man. I that's probably I wonder somebody's probably got that up on YouTube or something by now if you want oh, to watch that episodes. But yeah, that's a cool one. Well, yeah, dude, on that note, let's wrap stuff up and tell everybody where they can find you on the social media machines. All right. I am Brian Sonic on Twitter and Instagram, also Brian Sonic on YouTube, doing a whole bunch of uh WWE related stuff, and as I see, AEW Fight Forever is free now. So, as, as we mentioned, reviews were not kind, but I'm sure a few people will be coming back. So, I'll probably end up doing some more AEW videos also. And you can find me everywhere at Power Dragon, P O W R D R A G N. And we're going to have some stuff covering Modern Horizons 3, but a bunch of standard stuff. And really be ramping up as we get toward the end of the summer with some uh, collaborative efforts. And we get to rotation in August, so hit that up. But as always, wherever you are watching or listening, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and good night. Please remember to take care of yourselves and your family. Remember to be awesome, and most importantly, be awesome to each other.